This is Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling. You can find uh, the book worldwide uh, on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback versions. You can find the full color card deck on Etsy slash Magi Method. You can join us on Facebook. Today is going to be a little different. Um, Stop the Presses, uh, Doreen Virtue, the famous cartomancer and uh, new age person uh, has become a born-again Christian and she made a video stating that she's become a born-again Christian and uh, one of the things that she said uh, she has an Ascended Masters deck uh, which features uh, Ascended Masters such as Solomon, Jesus, Lug, Krishna, all kinds of crazy ones. Uh, Saint well, that, see, that sounds pejorative. St. Germain, Lakshmi, Paravati, St. Francis, Isis, Mother Mary, Moses. Uh, she has a, a deck of, you know, I don't know how many cards. I don't have the deck. And basically she came out on her video and said that some of the Ascended Masters that she identified in her Ascended Masters deck, and she may also have a book on this, um, are in fact demons. Okay, they're not ascended masters. Some of them are in fact descended masters or demons. Um, the the new age community is up in arms, uh, and there's some very uh, hyperbolic vitriol uh, running around, going around the web. Um, and basically, people are reacting like she said that uh, the New Age is satanic and uh, everyone who is involved in the New Age uh, is worshipping demons. Um, I, I kind of want everybody to calm down. Um, and I kind of want to, I, basically, I want to explain to you how things work. Uh, I wrote a book about this, okay, Please, Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling, um, The Magi Method. These three guys are the Magi, um, and it's not all or nothing. And I want to kind of explain to you uh, the Christian worldview uh, and, and how it dovetails in with uh, the New Age, etc., and what's really going on. Um, people are reacting like uh, her becoming, like Doreen Virtue, this very famous person becoming a born-again Christian, is her, it's it, like it's all or nothing. Like, now she's saying that everyone in the New Age is worshipping demons. Okay, um, I, I don't think that's what she's saying. I think, and I tried to find the original video... Uh, and I can't find it. I think it's been removed. Uh, there was such a hullabaloo about it that it's it's been removed. So I kind of want to explain, this is a book. Uh, I wrote this book for this reason. Okay, this is the Magi Method. Who are the Magi? Well, at the birth of Jesus Christ, three Magi, one, two, three, were present at the birth of Jesus. Okay? Everybody knows who Jesus is. Easter is tomorrow. Okay, Friday is Good Friday. He was on the cross dying for everybody's sins on Friday. Sunday he rises from the dead. It's called Easter. Okay, so three magi were present at uh, the birth of Jesus. Who were these three magi? They were astrologers from a foreign land. They traveled a long way. They saw a star in the sky, and they followed it to find the Christ child. Christ means Messiah, the Savior. Christ means Messiah. Messiah means Savior. Um, so, I, I kind of want to get into how, basically... I am a Christian Magi. That's, that's what this book is about. Okay. Is it contradictory to be a Magi and to be a Christian? 
No. The only three people present at the birth of Jesus were the three Magi. There were no, besides Mary and Joseph, there were no other Jews present. Uh, Jesus was Jewish. Uh, and there were no other, there were no rabbis, there were no Levites, there were no high priests. This is the Son of God. God could have appointed anyone to be there, but only three magi and some livestock and some illiterate shepherds were present. No other Jews were present. This is very significant. The purpose of magi uh, in the Old Testament, they surrounded the kings because kings were from God. And I, I cover this in the book. This is the first couple chapters uh, of the book. Um, and so uh, some of the greatest magi are in the Bible. Uh, Solomon was a great magi. He is the father of, of basically Kabbalah and high magic. What's Kabbalah? Kabbalah states that the Bible is, you know, the Bible is essentially the greatest magic book ever written. And frankly, if you know anything about magic, it is, the Bible is the greatest magic book ever written. And the Wiccans know this. Um, so I kind of want to explain what's going on. Uh, and how Christians view the world, and why this is not a contradiction, uh, why being uh, an astrologer or a cartomancer is not a contradiction of Christianity in any way, uh, and uh, it's not all or nothing, it's not one or the other, uh, and some, some angels are demons, okay, and other angels... They're all angels. I want to explain to you how stuff works, okay? I, from the Christian point of view. You don't have to agree with me, but I want to explain stuff from the Christian point of view, okay? And I'm going to use the cards. Okay, so in the beginning, um, God created, and I'm going to use the sun to represent God. God, represented here by the sun, created heaven and earth. Okay, he created the entire universe. And he said, uh, the, the earth was formless and void. And he said, let, there, let the light be separated from the day. Okay, and, and it was, and it was good. Who did this? The angels did this. Okay, the angels are the messengers of God. They're the warriors of God. They do the work of God. God says, let it be so, and he sends the angels to do it, okay? And right now, we live in a spiritual world. Right now, everything is upheld by God's righteous right hand. This is in the Bible. Everything, every instant, every moment, everything is held together actively by God. How's he doing this? Angels. Okay, these are his hand is, hands and feet. So when the world was created and everything was created, God said, let, there, let the water be separated from the dry land. And it was so. Who did this? The angels. When uh, God created the stars in the sky, who did this? The angels. Okay, they did everything. They are the hands and feet of God. Um, so they really, they really know everything. Okay, so six days God created the earth, and on the seventh day, he created, he created man. Uh, man and woman. Okay, and, and God created man and woman, and it was good. Okay, God created man and woman, mankind, in his image. Okay, we're made in the literal image of of God. Okay. And and God created man and woman as the new highest creation. Okay. This creates a problem. Okay. Because before man and woman were created, the angels were the highest creation. Okay. 
And the highest angel was Lucifer, the bright and shining one, who is also known as Satan, who is also, he's known by a lot of names. Okay, just as God is known by a lot of names. Okay, but when man and woman were created, mankind took the spot of the angels as the highest creation. This is problem this can be problematic on multiple levels. Okay? Because the angels are eternal and many of the angels are infinitely more powerful, more intelligent, uh, and much greater. They're eternal, we're temporal, uh, we're made of flesh, they exist outside of time and outside of flesh. Uh, they're, some of the angels are much, much, much more powerful than, uh, than man. Uh, okay. So, literally what happened on the day that God created mankind, man and woman, he created them male and female, um, man became the highest creation, okay? And so, this created a problem. Uh, Satan got really upset, and he said, no way, okay? Uh, we are the highest creation, and there's a lot of about this in the Bible, about how this particular angel named Satan, uh, he got very upset about this, and there was a war. There's a war in heaven, okay? And between God's angels and this archangel, and he literally declares himself God. He says, I am, I'm going to be God. I'm going to raise myself above the highest height. Uh, and so this war ensued and one third of the angels fell to the earth. Okay. Now, uh, all this faith stuff. Uh, okay, so literally man and woman, mankind is higher than the angels in the creation order. We're made after the angels and we're made higher. We are technically higher than the angels. Okay, but this is by faith because in fact, Satan is the God, small g, of this world. He is much greater than man. Uh, and when we encounter powerful spirits on this plane, they're like gods to us. Okay, so the, the demonic spirits, the fallen angels, are like gods compared to man. They're much smarter, they're eternal, they've been alive forever, they know how everything works. And when, when man was knit together uh, from the dirt, guess who did it? The angels, okay? Including Satan and the one serving him. Uh, so it's created a big fight. And that's what we experience. So here, uh, we live by faith, you can't see that. So Psalm 8, uh, you've made man, mankind, a little lower than the angels, for now, crowned them with gl glory and honor, you made them rulers over the works of your hands, you put everything under their feet. Uh, there's several words in there. Uh, the word that is uh, interpreted uh, as angels in Psalm 8 is actually Elohim. Elohim literally means gods. That's Hebrew, Hebrew for gods. Um, so uh, we are made, mankind is made a little lower than the gods uh, and, and the, the, the high ones. Uh, okay, so I want to explain to you what's happening in terms of energy. So mankind is higher than the angels. Uh, positionally, we're higher than the angels. But in fact, on this earth, the angels are more powerful than us. What is the interest of angels, exalted and fallen, in mankind? Uh, before 
the fall of man. Uh, and I just want to explain this. Okay, so before Christ, okay, represented by the cross, and the cross reconciles uh, man and woman. Okay, and then there's the angels. Before the cross, uh, before the cross, the angels can go directly. Even the fallen angels can go directly into the presence of God. Uh, there's a passage in Job uh, where Job is being tested. Everything is taken from him. His body is covered in sores. He covers himself in sackcloth and ashes. All his wealth is gone. Uh, all his children are gone. Uh, he goes through a terrible trial. The devil literally goes right into the presence of God. I'm going to explain this in terms of energy. God is like a sun. Okay, the angels, the exalted angels, they, they're not like us. They're a completely different form of life. And they draw their energy directly from God. They're made directly in relation to God. We also are made in relation to God, but we're very different than the angels. Uh, some of whom are exalted, some of whom are fallen. Uh, all of them are angels. Okay, so in Job... The devil can still go into the direct presence of God, meaning he can draw the life energy of God uh, directly, okay, until uh, the man Jesus Christ comes, okay, to reconcile man to God. So man and woman are again reconciled to God through the cross, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's a long explanation. I'm not going to go into it. Okay. When Jesus comes, the devil is cast down to earth. He can no longer, he's blocked by the cross. He can no longer go into the presence of God. So he now, all of the fallen angels under this guy, they draw the life energy that they need from man and woman, from the humans. There are entire religions that believe that everything that lives has this energy of God, okay? I believe they're right, okay? But the one that has the most energy of God is man and woman, because we are literally made in the image of God. So what Doreen Virtue said is she said she's become a Christian, okay? And some of these previously identified exalted masters... What are they called? Uh, she called them some of these ascended masters are in fact demons. Okay, so literally, um, the devil is God is building his kingdom. Okay, and I'm just going to use the yes and no card. God is building his kingdom. Okay, and his kingdom they. They are saved through the cross, through the sacrifice, through a direct relationship with God, okay? And by faith, we understand that, in fact, we are higher than the angels and that we can have a direct relationship with God. Um, and the devil, he deceives his people, he deceives men and women, into believing that they're less than him. Um, and he's building his kingdom. Why? Because he needs to draw the energy of God, and we have it. And that's his interest in man and woman. Uh, that's his interest in humankind. And that's what hell is. Now, right now, the devil is separated. He's cast down to earth. Since the cross, he can't go into the presence of God and draw the energy of God. He has to draw it from the man and the woman. So some, they're all angels. Okay, some are ascended, some are... Uh, uh, descended, some are exalted, some are fallen. Uh, but the fallen angels draw their energy from man and woman. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to explain is there's nothing wrong with uh, with cartomancy, there's nothing wrong with divination. The three people present at the birth of Jesus Christ 
were magi. They were astrologers and magi. Magi is the root of magic. The greatest Kabbalist, the greatest magi, one of the greatest magi who ever lived is King Solomon. King Solomon was the son of David. Jesus Christ is is in the line of David, okay? David's first son is Solomon. He's a great magi. He wrote the greatest magical books. Um, there's nothing wrong with Kabbalah. There's nothing wrong with magic. There's nothing wrong with experiencing God directly. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the Christians in our age have completely separated themselves from all experience of God directly. This is a terrible thing. This is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. That's why I wrote this book, because you don't have to do that. You can have spiritual gifts. I have spiritual gifts. I see the spirits. Uh, for instance, I see everything that woman uh, from the Dead Files, I see everything she sees. Okay, everything she's ever seen, I see those things too. Uh, okay, the the Long Island medium, the Hollywood medium, I've never seen anything they see because I, I don't see any of that stuff. I think they're fakes. Um, I think there's no, it's not all or nothing. There's no contradiction between a direct spiritual experience of God and, uh, and Christianity. I am a Christian Magi. And I would encourage you to be the same. You can have all the gifts. Uh, I also command the spirits. I've cast out spirits. That's called exorcism. Can I do that? Yes, I can. I've experienced uh, miracles. I've been involved in miracles. You can't experience miracles without being involved in miracles. It's not like watching television. It's a very interactive experience, and it's hard to explain. Um, I, I've been involved in several miracles. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't know any Christians who can see in the spirit like I can. Uh, what's that called? Uh, the pagan form of it is called mediumship. Uh, the Christian version of it is called prophecy. I have a minor gift of prophecy. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the devil. Some, some angels are fallen, not all. And I think that's all she's saying. We have the right to command the spirits. This is this right to command the spirits because we are higher than them is called Kabbalah, magic, exorcism, manifestation, and fortune telling. There's nothing wrong with fortune telling. Uh, none of these things are non Christian. Um, and that's why I wrote this book. That's why I wrote this book. Um, this is not just the purview of magic and manifesting uh, the greatest magician the greatest magi ever are all christians moses the greatest magical battle ever recorded is moses he's one of the greatest magi ever there's none greater okay there's elijah there's elisha there's daniel there's joseph daniel was a magi he's one of the greatest people who ever lived one of the most powerful people of his age he was a magi and all he did was read fortunes for the king that's that was his role he was also a governor joseph was a magi the great joseph uh he was an interpreter of dreams he became the most powerful man on the planet during his age he was a magi these men are indisputably christians solomon a great, great magi. He's the father of all magic in our age. And if you read his stuff, you'll know. Uh, and nobody has surpassed him. So uh, there are fallen spirits, and they are very interested in humans, and you have to discern the difference. And I think that that is what Doreen Virtue is saying. Uh, hopefully she's not going to declare everything to be the devil, like the foolish Christians do, uh, which is literally why I wrote this book. Um, anyway, I'm, I hope that was clear. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. You can find 
uh, the book worldwide on Amazon, in both Kindle and paperback versions. You can find the full color card deck pictured here on Etsy slash Magi Method. Please like and subscribe.